Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this webinar uh, covering the good, the bad and the otherwise of the Totika scheme. My name is Martin Welders, uh, call me Marty and I'll be alongside Thomas taking you through this wee journey this morning. Um, Thomas, do a bit of an introduction if you could please sir. Kia ora everybody, Morena. Uh, yeah, my name is Thomas Haidewa. Uh, I have been involved in health and safety for about coming up to 12 years now. Um, uh, I'm a member of NZISM and I am on the Wellington Committee. Thank you, Thomas. And a bit about me, uh, I run Manage Group alongside a very nice team of uh, colleagues. We specialise in government compliance and have been doing this since uh, 2011 now, just over 10 years. And uh, for me personally, very passionate about compliance, very passionate about making sure our clients are treated fairly and equitably when it comes to uh, government, ACC and WorkSafe. And Totika fits in uh, right in the middle of all of that. Look, a little bit of housekeeping uh, this morning. There is a Q&A function on uh, your screen. It should be near the top. Uh, if you're working from a iPhone or something like that, I'm not entirely sure where it is, but it will be on there. Uh, we do know that a number of you have posted questions um, on the registration, so thank you for that. We'll endeavour to cover all the questions. If we cannot, please respect that. There are over 200 registrations, so there's a fair bit there. And uh, But what we will do is follow up afterwards and share with you any answers and things like that as well. We're also recording this, so very happy to share that. Now, I do want to just welcome uh, everyone on board, massive range of people from the largest New Zealand uh, uh, main contractors and funders all the way through to some of the smaller players, as well as um, some of the folk from prequel schemes. So to the guys of um, Safe365, welcome. Look, a little bit of uh, an agenda today. We're going to go through the context uh, of the New Zealand prequel landscape. We're going to go through why you need them, challenges, the Totika framework, and then future expectations. Thomas and I are going to bounce uh, off each other as we go through this. And again, uh, please do ask lots of questions. Now, first slide is the one for me. A little bit of history in New Zealand when it comes to prequel schemes. Uh, for those of you that were in business for the last 20 years, then uh, in 2001, we had the WSMP, the Workplace Safety Management Practices, that kicked off. And uh, believe it or not, that was not actually designed by ACC to be a, uh, a compliance tool from a pre-qualification point of view. However, industry turned it into that. And uh, it was kind of good in a way where we just had one scheme. Uh, you can argue whether it was effective or not, but um, either way, that's what we had in place. Then in 2012, the government started talking about the Safety Star Rating Scheme, uh, which never actually took off, but it did morph into the Safe Plus Scheme that is also one of the prequels that have been accredited to TOTICA. We all know in 2016 we got the new legislation embedded, and in 2017 ACC decided to stop the WSMP. And since then, it's been a bit of a slippery slide, where there's been a massive plethora of new prequel schemes. And, um, and, and we'll just go into some of the challenges around that. But Thomas, maybe you can share with the audience why we actually even have prequels to begin with. Yeah, thanks, Marty. Um, I guess uh, if, if we're realistic and, and um, straight to the point, a prequalification or uh, around health and safety for your contractors when you engage them is a key component as to... Um, ensuring or, or a level of assurance or um, due diligence that they have a health and safety uh, system um, and way of working which is going to benefit uh, not only themselves but other uh, contractors or people that they may interact with so it's a it's a starting point it's not the whole piece but it's absolutely a starting point and look it's a it's probably a procurement tool isn't it marty yep 100 percent of course it is. It sets a certain standard, doesn't it? And uh, that gives the folk upstream uh, the confidence that the downstream have something good going on in health and safety. Thank you, Thomas. Um, yeah. Look, there's a range of challenges with the current landscape. And um, for those of you who are complete prequels, 
Yes, we feel your pain. For those of you who have to vet the prequels, as in the main contractors, yes, we feel your pain. So some of the challenges that we've listed here is, look, there are so many different schemes. Uh, clients, main contractors, upstream, use different ones. So that means we've got a massive amount of duplication going on. And all of them cost money, whether it's through time, fees, or generally frustration, which means there is an opportunity cost. Overall, what it does also do, sadly, it challenges the credibility of the whole health and safety framework when it comes to prequels. If we've got two different prequel schemes saying, hey, now you've got to use ours, now we've got to use ours, well, actually, we're covering the same bits of legislation, so let's not get too silly about it. However, that is currently what we're dealing with, isn't it? And um, Thomas, this I think is such a, a wonderful slide taken from Chaz Ants. Guys, Tatika sits under Chaz Ants, of course. And, uh, and, and this slide just to me sums it up. You want to just talk to this, bud? Yeah, so um, I guess when Chaz Ants was set up, uh, the industry and, and those um, lots of people in the industry were really frustrated with um, the duplication and um, cost of delivering pre-qualification to their upstream clients um, on a on a wide range of of requirements. Not all of the pre-qualification processes use the same questionnaires or even the same um, terminology, and it gets really confusing um, for people who um, who might not necessarily be um, health and come from a health and safety uh, background like ourselves, Marty. So yeah. uh, there's just so much duplication and it's, um, it can be in-house, it can be externally provided and um, yeah, confusing, costly, and it takes up a whole heap of time. And so I'm not surprised that that sort of $38,000 a year yeah. um, is, is up there. That That's a, that's a full-time wage for, for an administrator or something like that, isn't it? Oh, look, minimum wage, $20. You're pretty close to, I would say. Mm. Look, folks, for those of you that know me, uh, you know I'm Dutch, and you know I've got very short arms and very deep pockets. I don't like spending money. And um, to me, $38,000 a year is a, is a ridiculous amount of money that, hey, look, if you're making 10% profit margins, that's 380 k in revenue just to pay for prequel schemes. Uh, crazy. Don't like it at all. So, what's Totika? Thomas, I think you're the best qualified to cover this one, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so, Totika was set up by uh, by Chazan's. Um, essentially, the, the easiest way to um, explain it is it's a standard for pre-qualification providers to, to set. Um, what it means is uh, if you're a um, registered Tortica supplier, there's a universal standard. And if you're delivering your pre-qualification to the Tortica standard, then uh, there's cross-recognition framework. So it doesn't matter which brand delivers that um, pre-qualification. As long as it's been delivered to the Tortica standard, it should be widely accepted. Cool. So my simple little brain, the Totika framework is, uh, we've got their ticket to the dance, right? We've got lots of prequel schemes, but ultimately a prequel will allow you to tender for work. And so it's a ticket to the dance, and but you still got to pick up a date at the dance, which is ultimately doing your side work and things like that. Would that be fair? Yeah, bang on. Cool. All right. Well, some of the benefits um, are really the opposites to the challenges that we listed, aren't they? And the top one, I think, is really quite important, is that cross-recognition, where we do not have to belong to multiple schemes. We can belong to one scheme only that is accredited to Totika, and that is it. Move on. You can imagine the cost and time saving, the $38,000. I think that's probably a little bit conservative, given we certainly know of uh, companies who belong to well over 10 prequel schemes just to satisfy their clients, probably more of an insurance policy so they can do the work, really. And look, from our perspective, the emphasis should be on what are we doing on site? What risks are we managing on site? If you can focus on that more, then that's got to be a good thing for everyone, including ultimately our workers who are the ones that are getting injured. So overall, Totika is about just getting that credibility back in the prequel stage space. Let's get a decent standard going on so we can all be comfortable. How does it work? 
Well, there's really four components that, um, that, that the way we look at it, or four parties. We've got the actual prequel schemes. We've got uh, buyers, as in the main contractors, the top of the food pile. We've got suppliers and contractors. But then we also got suppliers who have it downstream as well. So those are really the four parts. So we're just going to dive into a little bit more detail around all of this and share with you that it, there are four categories. And so this, if you're thinking we are the contractor, we are the ones that are signing up to a prequel scheme, we will fit into one of these four categories. Thomas, please. Yeah, so um, the good thing about uh, the Tortuga standard is they've um, tried to break it up and make it clearly uh, understandable that there's different, um, different contractors will um, present different risk profiles. And so what that looks like is if you're a sole trader and you don't employ staff, you don't engage other contractors directly underneath you and you work independently, then you're relatively low risk um, to, to the grand scheme of thing on, things on a construction site. Beautiful. Category one. Category one, um, uh, they employ no more than 20 people, uh, contracts, um, uh, no contracts in excess of 2.5 million. And they don't um, do any high or very high risk work activity. Um, yeah. And so there's a little bit of nuance there um, when we start to talk about high or high, very high risk work activity. But if we move on, um, we can touch on that as well. So yeah, category two uh, employs no more than 200 people. Uh, no contracts in excess of 20 million and no very high risk work activity. So um, as you well know, in New Zealand, we're already talking about really large employers um, if they're sort of up to um, 200 people. And category three is, is the top level. They uh, employ more than 200 people. Contracts excess of 20 million and uh, does do very high risk work activity. So um, I know we've spoken a little bit about work activity um, in, in three of those categories uh, without creating a big list and, and um, scrolling through it for everyone here this morning. Uh, there, uh, Chazan's um, Tortica website does have a web link that uh, you can go to and go through the questions, answer um, according to your business, and it will tell you which category that you sit in. Yeah, absolutely. Look, there's been some uh, really good chats coming through and questions. Um, I'm not gonna answer the questions just yet because we do cover uh, that information off. Um, so, so that is all good. Look, those categories are really important and the high risk, look, let's be, let's be smart about this, scaffolding. It's pretty high risk. It's up there, right? Um, repairing photocopiers, eh, unless they have flamethrowers attached to them, I'm guessing it's a pretty low risk, right? So a bit of common sense, I think, does prevail in that space. All right. Now, the framework. There are uh, a bunch of, well, Thomas, I want to get you to talk about this, actually. Yeah, sure. No worries. Um, so the Tortica framework, um, what we're touching on here is uh, other providers that are recognized or uh, accepted as equivalent to the tour ticker standard. Um, so as you mentioned earlier, Safe Plus um, has been set up by WorkSafe and, and they deliver an audit uh, at, to, to, a, to their own sort of standard. Uh, Telarc um, are a auditing company uh, organization, sorry, in, in New Zealand, um, and they deliver a, uh, QSAFE um, audit, uh, which, which is very robust as well. The ISO 45001, relatively new, but yes, there's also um, audits and accreditations that come with that, uh, with that system. And JAZANS is actually an auditing um, uh, body um, for Australia and New Zealand. And um, JAZANS, as a scheme provider, you actually have to be audited by Jazans as well. So um, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. It's, it's essentially all of these levels um, is where you need to get to, to, to make it, to get that ticket to the dance. 
Yeah. So one of the questions that came up is that um, does the Tika want to see the contractor's paperwork? And the, the short answer is no, they don't. They rely on the good people um, that do the prequels for the business, right? That's right. And yep. there are also a bunch of questions that have come up, and I think this is quite a um, uh, a hot topic, um, is up, up, upstream still demanding different things. And look, we do cover that off right near the end. And because, uh, yeah, look, it is a really useful and important question and one that's probably the most, um, oh, most important, I guess, from making Tatika work. Right, so we will cover that. Look, there are four providers, four prequel schemes that have signed up to Totika. That means they have gone through an auditing process, um, as Thomas just described. So the logic is that if you are part of one of these four prequel schemes, and uh, all of them do cover up to level three, and they have uh, different touch points uh, for sole trader, level one, level two, level three, and uh, then you are part of Totika at category three. Still on the prequel scheme have said, yes, you are good enough to be at that level. Now, the prequel schemes do go through your evidence, of course. They're the ones that want to make sure that, hey, yeah, you guys are pretty tickety-boo when it comes to a health and safety framework. And Can I, um, sorry, you know, Marty, there is, yep. sorry, sorry to jump in there. I no, just want no. to make it, try and make it clear as well. Tor ticker, the name Tor ticker, is um, is the standard that the um, qualification, pre-qualification providers are um, uh, assessing to. It's not a new um, uh, pre-qualification provider um, that that will charge you or they're not trying to sell you anything. They are trying to set the standard. Yeah, spot on. Now, you will appreciate for uh, prequel schemes providers does not cover the New Zealand landscape from all the prequel schemes that are out there. Look, we're not going to say, because uh, I quite frankly don't know why others are not in this at this point in time. It'll be a commercial decision on their part, but ultimately you as a contractor um, will make a decision around, hey, what do we need in our business to future-proof ourselves so we can actually keep doing what we're doing? Yeah, Thomas, anything you wish to add in that regard? Um, no, you're, you're, you're right there. Um, what I would add is if your um, client is requesting um, pre-qualification and you um, are about to embark on that journey, because it is a journey, it takes, takes some time and, and commitment, then you should ask them uh, if they accept tour ticker and if they don't, um, or if they don't know about it, you should ask them why not, because um, it is the standard and it should be where the future of um, pre-qualification looks like in New Zealand. Yeah. The cost. Look, the pre-qual schemes have their own arrangement with the TICA, right? They register, they get audited, and they have their pricing points. Buyers, the ones that are upstream, they spend $1,000 a year to be part of Totika, which gives them access to the database. So thereby they can see all the contractors who are who have um, registered with Totika because they've satisfied one of those four prequels. Suppliers and contractors, doesn't cost you anything. You spend your money with the prequel scheme, right? Uh, one of those four prequels, that's where you spend your energy, your efforts. And when they have said yes, you meet our standard, then you can literally register with Totika, which is, I think, about a two or three minute exercise. Pretty jolly simple. But some of you will also have a downstream where you in turn also use contractors. Then obviously you come back up a step because you're really more of a buyer in that space and then you spend $1,000 a year. So it's actually not that expensive, uh, especially if you're a uh, contractor, right? So what's the future? Well, there's a bit of stuff going on here. And um, ultimately, as a business, as a contractor, we're going to choose and we're going to make decisions on our business, on our strategy. That may mean that we're going to choose a prequel scheme that will allow us to align ourselves with Totika going forward. Now, in that, we do have to be conscious, and this goes for upstream the buyers as well, is that 
your ex expiration date of an existing prequel scheme might not be till 2023. So we're going to have to be a little bit flexible. The government often talks about a grandfather clause. You know, there's just a period where granddad just needs to settle in and, and feel comfortable and uh, put his rug over his lap. And this is probably no different. Right. And uh, is there anything you want to add to that, Thomas? Um, not not in particular. Um, I think it's really important to um, to uh, recognize or respect that somebody, if they already have a um, pre-qualification um, certificate or, or whatever it might be, they've already invested some money and some time uh, and resource to, to achieve that. Um, it, I, I know of uh, clients that, that will accept um, multiple levels of, of um, pre-qualification, different types. Um, dependent upon whatever that expiry date is. So yeah, I think it's it's really important that that continues. Um, but when it comes to renewal time, that's when you, you might be thinking about who who your supplier is. Yeah, look, there is awesome questions coming through and we do have a bit of time shortly. So um, we will start going through those questions as well. And um, one of the questions is very much uh, well, one of the themes, I guess, of questions, Thomas, is very much around, hey, our clients are demanding all sorts of stuff. They've got no idea about Totico. Oh, my gosh, this is never going to kind of change, really. And sure. um, look, yeah, we hear you. <laughs> As health and safety providers, we have the conversations on behalf of our clients with the main contractors, the buyers. And uh, let's just say Thomas and I are probably a bit more aggressive than most when it comes, oi, stop for a sec. Let's just take a big breath and understand what's going on in New Zealand and educate. Now, you may not have the time to do all that sort of educating because you need to run your business and you may end up just doing what they ever need to see from a prequel scheme, bite the bullet type of thing. However, I do think there is definitely a place to start pushing back. Look, there is a big buy-in. We've got buy-in from government that is uh, uh, definitely in place. The Construction Accord have bought into this. There's, To be honest with you guys, there's actually a lot of main contractors on this um, webinar this morning that are the bigger players in the country. And they do make the decisions around what they want to have for their prequel schemes. So look, I, this is absolutely a shout out to the bigger players. So hey, thank you for coming online because they too want to educate. So the more people that are doing the educating, the showing, the teaching, the sharing of information, the better it's gonna be. Will it be sorted in three months? Probably not folks, let's be honest. This has been what Thomas, a three year journey for Chaz and Totika? Yeah, at least three years. At least a three-year journey, and and you're right, Marty. It's not going to be sorted in three months. Um, but uh, I think the approach is um, my understanding of it is this is the standard. Let's give people time to catch up or get to that standard. But um, shortly, it's going to be widely um, understood and expected from. Um, uh, from the clients upstream, like like government or um, people on the construction sector accord, but it's also going to be expected from the likes of your residential builders as well, and 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 things like that. There have been a couple of questions there, in regards to to what that is. Um, uh, region, regional city councils, all of those types of things, you're going to see a groundswell, and and people really take this up because it's the standard that should be met. Yeah. I think it's um, really useful to look back a little bit on history here. That slide I had earlier on um, where I spoke about the WSMP, the Workplace Safety Management Practices, I want to remind folks that that was not actually a prequel scheme. Yeah, It was a scheme designed by ACC where, hey, look, if we can have a certain level in health and safety, we should see a corresponding drop in workplace claims. That is why that scheme was introduced. And in order to encourage employers ACC bribed my language, uh, employees with a 10, 15 or 20% discount. And that's where you had your primary, secondary and tertiary levels. Industry took the WSMP and said, hey, here's a tool that we could use to drive our prequels. To be honest, prequels might not have been the language that was used 20 years ago. That is okay. The, uh, the essence or the premise of it is exactly that. So industry turned it into that. Industry is pretty good at adapting pretty quickly. And I think I think for the contractors, it's worth uh, sharing also that as a main contractor, 
it is a pain in the butt to do pre-qualing. It is costly, time consuming, right? I've not yet met a main contractor, unless they're a little bit weird, like Thomas and I, who enjoy doing prequels. They don't, because it's not their core business, right? They feel they need to do it because they want a certain level of assurance that their downstream meets that level. So Totika is about making their lives a lot easier. Absolutely. So if, if a main contractor doesn't have to sit there going, oh, what scheme shall we, no, look, Totika is there, it's the umbrella. If the prequels meet that at whatever level we need them, so I'll trade a one, two, or three, then we're happy. I can't stress that enough, team. Yeah, main contractors like subcontractors, you will feel the pain. Yeah, absolutely. I have to agree with you there, Marty. Um, let's be honest. Pre-qualification is essentially a desktop audit. They look at documentation to um, and make some assumptions that uh, what is being done um, on site is what is recorded in the documentation. Uh, as a client or a, as a upstream uh, principal, the real truth is um, the proof is in the pudding, right? What's actually happening on site, that's where you're going to get your best safety outcomes. Pre-qualification is due diligence, but let's focus on you know the critical risk, the stuff that actually happens on site. Um, just to go through a couple of questions here, um, if you have ISO 45001, if you have QSAFE or if you have SAFE Plus, you automatically meet level category three. You do not need to be part of any other prequel scheme as a result. Yeah, uh, let's face it, ISO is not a cheap exercise and not every business will have that. Um, larger businesses tend to be more so that they use ISO and equally companies that have uh, affiliates offshore because it's certainly a little bit more recognized globally than what it is in New Zealand. But the thing is, if you have ISO, QSAFE or SAFE Plus, you do not need to belong to a prequel scheme. How cool is that, right? How much will that save time for you guys? Um, just looking at some of the questions, Thomas. The one question from Alex, no, from Peter. Um, are you suggesting that if you've paid ISO 401, you don't need further prequels? Yes, sorry, I'm just doubling up. Yep. Someone's very happy with that response. Yes. Um, what about the levels? Let me just go in the questions once. To think it's gold, silver, or bronze, why is ISO only providing a performing score? Well, ultimately, it doesn't really matter because if you have ISO 45001, you automatically meet to take it. So it's probably a little bit redundant. Do you want to pick a couple of questions, Thomas, that you see in there? Uh, yeah, um, I think in relation to that one there, when it talks about performing, um, from my understanding, and, and I haven't yet seen a, a Tortica scoring system, to be fair, but, um, <clears throat> pardon me, performing means that it meets the Tortica standard. Um, uh, if it's developing, then they're working towards uh, uh, Tortica's um, core criteria. Um, performing means that it meets it. Um, unlike some prequal uh, providers in the past, they might have uh, five stars or three and a half out of five or um, a percentage score 70, 75% out of 100. Um, Tortica delivers on you're either performing or developing. Question, where does IAS Net World fit into things? For instance, does NZTA now recognize Totika? I did note NZTA are on the website of Totika as one of the organizations that have bought into Totika. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Waka Kotahi, uh, NZTA are um, a, a big advocate for the Totika scheme and um, I, I doubt that's going to change anytime soon. Yeah, I know Mark is uh, answering a bunch of the stuff coming through chat. Mark, thank you. Um, you're tapping away furiously there. And if Totika standardizes the info, then what would be the purpose of commercial prequels companies in the future? Um, ultimately, the prequels are the ones that you, the subcontractor, align to. 
And as Thomas has uh, highlighted, the fatigue is just making sure that the prequel schemes, the overarching umbrella, is at the right level. So there will always be space for prequel schemes. And uh, definitely, the only difference is rather than having to belong to 2, 3, 5, 10, 21, gosh, then um, you only need to belong to one. And I think that's that's the aim of what Tooltika was set out to do, was to stop the duplication. Um, if you can meet a standard and the standard is national and it's widely accepted, then everybody understands that that's, that's um, what's expected or, or is acceptable. Yeah. Look, I think we've hit the um, half hour mark, which has just flown by. Uh, we'll happily just keep going through the questions, guys. We have actually covered off uh, what we were going to do in our presentation. So um, let me just conclude the presentation and then we can carry on with the questions and if people need to, to carry on because um, everyone below Auckland's back to level three and then they're keen to get to the, the sites, then absolutely, we respect that. Look, what we're going to be doing on the back of this, we'll reach out um, to all of you to say, hey, thanks very much for attending. It is one of the biggest webinars that we've certainly had from an uptake, which is awesome. It probably highlights that there are a lot of questions in the Totika space. So brilliant for signing on, brilliant for taking action, folks. And, um, and as a bit of a call to action, we love doing this stuff. We've got a lot of information. Use us and uh, use Thomas, use myself, use our respective companies and uh, to, to help guide you through this world, right? That's what we enjoy doing. So there will be follow-up emails with the answers to questions and a link to the recording. And we invite you just to share it widely especially with your upstream if you are a subcontractor yeah fair enough thomas absolutely couldn't agree more the cool. more people that um become aware of the tortica standard and um see it as acceptable and and move forward with it the easier life's going to be for um you know contractors and suppliers to to this vast network yeah so here's a question so i've been through prequel i have the tika very solid, Mark. Well done. I shouldn't have to go through another provider at client's request. Technically, no. And this is where you can then have a good chat with your uh, another provider and say, hey, look, do you understand Totika? And look, if you want to, share my contact details. I'll quite happily have the conversation with them, as I'm sure with Thomas as well. And um, yeah, we, we, we don't mind educating, so um, you can definitely use us in that regard. Um, yeah, I would also say that... Um the client, it could be just, um, it, it could just be that a, a little bit of ignorance, perhaps that they're not aware of what tour ticker is and, and what it's designed to do. Um, and, uh, you know, um, once, as we said, once it gets out there, um, the uptake should be, should be really positive. Yeah. And I think, look, let's just wrap this up, Thomas. I think um, it, it's fair to say from our perspective, we very much support Totika. And um, we like the initiative. It's been long overdue. Uh, it's been an absolute minefield um, in, in the in the prequel space, hasn't it? And, um, and and look, that's no disrespect to all the prequel firms out there. Not at all. And um, everyone was plugging a, a gap that they, you know, the best way they could. And uh, now we though we we have a bit of simplification going on, and and it's about supporting that. So a big shout out to Chazans and and Workday for doing that. And um, yeah, and watch the space, I guess. There's just the last couple of notes from chats. Uh, uh, yep, they've been answered. Cool. Look, Thomas, any parting words from you? No, um, look, thanks so much for the opportunity to join you, Marty. Um, it's it's always a robust and interesting conversation, and especially when it comes to prequel, you know it's something I'm passionate about. If we can um, clarify some of the muddy waters, then fantastic. Let's Let's make that happen. Beautiful. So thanks very much for having me, yeah? Yeah, you're welcome. And folks, uh, Thomas's son's birthday today, so you gave him the hard word early this morning to say, yeah, don't come in. And, no interruptions. Uh, so you can give your son a big squeeze for, for well done, but I was looking I forward will. to him coming on this call. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, guys.